Today I will talk about uh, different kinds of research that we are conducting under the domain of behavioral science. Well, research is something which is conducted in all forms of sciences including computational sciences, neurosciences and also in behavioral sciences. Research is conducted for various purposes to understand various constructs, to understand various issues which are pertinent to the understanding of human behavior when we conduct research in behavioral science. There are three kinds of research generally we try to conduct and publish in behavioral science. One kind of research is purely empirical research which we conduct directly on subjects, get the primary data, analyze them and publish it. The other kind of research that we do, we call it empirical research clubbed into several heads which is called meta-analytical research. A number of empirical researches are clubbed, data are secondarily analyzed and then a research is conducted which we call meta-analytical research. And the third form of research is generally done on theoretical basis, where the dimensions and constructs are identified and the research articles are published. So, basically empirical research, meta-analytical research and theoretical research. These are the three are different kinds of research that we conduct and publish in scientific literature. Today I would be talking to you about these researches which are conventionally done with certain procedures and then after that I will try to concentrate on non-traditional research in behavioral science, which are generally done using the concept from other sciences or using an interdisciplinary approach, which I call multidisciplinary research using non-traditional research program that are generally not defined within the classical traditions of behavioral science. So, at the outset I will first talk about different types of researches that we conduct with certain conventional procedures. The issues in research methods are to be understood in order to understand the conventional methods. As we see that in the conventional research programs also in unconventional there are certain major methods, there are certain steps in research, there are certain goals of inquiry and there are certain limitations of inquiry in behavioral science. Finally, there are certain ethical issues as well, which is a very important issue though I will not be discussing with it in great detail, but I will touching it upon since conventional research actually looks for these issues in general. So, when we conduct a conventional research in behavioral science, there are certain goals of inquiry, which include description of a particular behavior, which is nothing but a scientific description or analysis following observation of a particular behavior. Sometimes we go beyond the scientific description and try to make prediction, which is also a goal of inquiry. Now, these predictions at times through scientific inquiry are very accurate. When they are very accurate, we try to also explain them that why such behavior has occurred through certain theoretical and empirical explanations. And if we understand why such a cause and effect relationship has been established, we also try to control it in case there are certain aberrations. And finally, we try to understand the applications when we Im implement those behavior, uh, behavioral results into certain uh, day to day life. Therefore, <coughs> the goals of inquiry in scientific uh, research are very many. It can at a very lowest level be a description only, a scientific description of a particular behavior under a certain context. More than that is called predictions. If we can understand that whether such kind of behavior is going to be repeated or at what point it would be done or it at what point it, it would be executed then prediction is possible. More than prediction, when we understand that the prediction is very accurate, we can actually explain why such behavior has taken place. And after we explain it, if we understand the cause effect relationship, 
we can control several kinds of behavioral aberrations or we can optimize a particular relationship cause effect relationship for a better application or for a future application. These are the goals of inquiry. The steps in research of course, are there are five different steps. These steps include how what kind of strategy in a in we have in a particular research. It may be experimental strategy, it may be a correlational strategy, what kind of literature that we have in hand which are called heuristics, what kind of tools that we use which are called logistics, what kind of methodologies we are using that is called statis, uh, tactics and finally, how we analyze the data which is called statistics. After completing all these things, we try to communicate this research. Then comes that what are the major methods that are available with us. For example, if we have to only have a description scientific description of a behavior, we can simply bank on observational method. If we try to understand the cause effect relationship in great detail, we would like to generalize it and we would like to do experiments repeated experiments in order to do some kind of explanations following prediction of a behavior. If we try to see the epidemiology or see the occurrences of a particular behavior in a community or in a particular area, we can use a survey method. If we are interested in understanding a particular instance, instance or a critical incident, we can go for a case study method. Sometimes we go beyond that and we simulate a method in a virtual reality. The simulation is nothing but an actual event is artificially created in a given environment. When such situations are created, it is called simulations. The simulations are possible in artificial environments through computer simulations as well as through other technologies which are called immersion technology. Also, we can use certain tests in order to understand a behavior. So, the major methods which are available in conventional research program are observational, experimental, survey type, case study simulations and tests. There are limitations of all such inquiries that is many such results are subjected to some kind of subjective interpretation of qualitative data. It also have uh, uh, the uh, difficulty of having the differences amongst the logistics which are relative nature of the tools. Every tool has its own uh, deficiencies that are reflected. And in psychological research or behavioral research, there is nothing called an absolute zero point. So, when we calibrate a behavior other than qualitative analysis of behavior, we also try to calibrate it on an interval scale, but none of these calibrations start with a zero or a absolute point. Therefore, in conventional research methods, we have certain goals of inquiry, we have certain major methods, we have certain steps in research, we have certain limitations of inquiry. And we have certain ethical issues, which are also very important. The candidates or the subjects participate voluntarily with their informed concept. We share the result of the study of the candidate wants for and finally, we do a debriefing in ethical issues. This is the pattern of a conventional research that we conduct. Now, what point is missing here that this conventional research for can also be done for non-conventional variables, construct dimensions as well. Generally, in behavioral sciences, we try to manipulate two behavioral constructs at one point of time. Generally, three kinds of researches we conduct. Either we try to understand the relationship between two known variables with a known outcome or at times we try to understand the relationship between two known variables for an unknown outcome and at times we also try to understand the relationship between one unknown and one known variable, naturally the outcome would be unknown. And at times, at a very high level of research, we try to understand the relationship between two unknown variables, naturally the variable outcome would also be unknown in such cases. Therefore, a varieties of researches are done with the kind of variable that we are using and the count of kind of outcome that we are expecting. If it is two known variable with a known outcome that reflects a repetitive research, a replicative research which are generally conducted in classroom practicals with limited generalizability other than 
the demonstration purposes. But whenever we undertake a high level research, we try to understand the relationship between two variables with some kind of unknown relationship. Under such conditions, we have two psychological variables, but the variable outcome is unknown. But whenever we try to take a variable which is more than or out of the domain or the gamut of the psychological sciences, then naturally there is a relationship that we try to establish between these two will have an unknown outcome as well. I will be talking about some such researches where the domains of behavioral science are admixtured with some kind of domains other than behavioral science at times or at the same time the domains of behavioral science with two constructs or two dimensions which are generally not tested, but can be tested under certain non traditional conditions. These researches I will try to explain one after another. Of course, there are certain assumptions in non traditional research. The assumptions come like this that the research that goes beyond the conventionally defined domains of psychological science. The conventional defined domains of psychological science are known to all of us, but some of the areas like behavioral ecology, how ecological science and behavioral science come together. As I said, when we go beyond the domain of behavioral science and try to understand the relationship between behavior and a different science, it becomes part of the non-traditional research. Likewise, we can also try to understand the cognitive ergonomics as a science. Ergonomics is a science generally practiced in, uh, in engineering sciences, but the cognitive component of the ergonomics is actually a fine admixture of psychological science and ergonomical science, which at times we call human factor research or human engineering. Behavioral research also as I said behavioral with ecology, how ecology impacts a behavior or how behavior is influenced by some kind of ecology are some form of research generally not conducted in behavioral science. We can undertake some such research in order to do some form of non-traditional research. Likewise, we can do research that addresses contemporary issues of psychological relevance. The contemporary issues are not charted in the book always in the textbook we can actually understand the relationship between the contemporary issues and some form of behavioral manifestation. For example, mobile attachment, how far mobile is becoming addicted to all our social interactions, how social paranoia is uh, growing that we become suspicious to each other, how it becomes contagious following certain incidents. These are certain issues which need to be tested and conventionally or traditionally these are not studied since there is no available constructs in the books for such kind of research. We can actually undertake such form of non-traditional research in order to understand the contemporary issues of some kind of psychological relevance. We can also conduct research that assimilates fragmented capabilities to create a knowledge grid across discipline. As I said, there are very few researches are done based on meta analysis. Most researches 99 percent of the researches are done in our country, which are uh, through empirical studies with direct access for data on a fragmented component of a behavior to understand the relationship between two variable or to generalize certain concept through certain experimental manipulation. But generally we do not conduct meta analytical research where we should try to integrate all forms of research under a different domain and then come out with a logical conclusion of those researches to understand the cause effect relationship for a given kind of behavior. We do not conduct such form of research. I do not call it as a non-traditional research as such in order to tell that these are not done, but generally these researches give a better explanation of behavior and at times we can go beyond our mindset and apply our mind to do secondary data analysis from a large data bank in order to understand a behavior with a much realistic and a bigger picture in mind. Likewise, we can do research that offers solutions to complex social problems like optimism bias is a very important issue. 
Optimism bias is a form of research wherein, wherein the people's optimism are uh, not conducive to their well being. Now, if I believe that well everybody else will have cancer and I will not have cancer therefore, I should not uh, take any precautions against cancer in case I have been smoking is nothing but optimism bias. I am addicted to some kind of thing which is de uh, detrimental to the cause of my health. I believe that everybody else will have a difficulty, but I will not have a difficulty is called optimism bias. Many people suffer in our country and they are subjected to some kind of disease because of the optimism bias. How far they run? Running amok is another issue in a collective society like ours that we lose our individuality and exercise certain behavior which are contradictory to our personal wisdom which we call running amok. Fratricide for example, is one such issue. You get uh, agitated by the agitation which is provoked by a group of people, you run amok and at the same time you lose your individuality and personal wisdom and ultimately create a havoc in, in the society only to be reprimanded by yourself at a later point of time. Likewise, research that may utilize our traditional knowledge into contemporary use. Spiritual healing for a example, how spiritual healing actually takes place, how healing uh, takes place due to faith or belief. We are a country with uh, a number of uh, belief system in our uh, psychological construction of health. Question is how far spiritual heal healing helps us. We have a traditional knowledge on yoga, we have a traditional knowledge on spiritual healing. How does it help to get rid of the contemporary difficulties that we have been facing? What are the social placebos that we have? How we derive social motivation and social placebo? In fact, there are many researches in biological and pharmacological sciences done on placebo. Almost no research done on social nocebo. There is a concept called social nocebo, there is a concept called social placebo. Placebo we know that there are incidences where you are not given the actual uh, ingredient for a given purpose and yet you feel better in the form of some kind of medicine which are not meant for your particular disease, but you are believing that you have been getting that medicine and accordingly it has been found that placebo has its own impact. So, if you are given an injection for a particular disease which you believe that you had, but the doctor does not believe, doctor often uses placebo. But the other issue is that the social nocebo, wherein you are having a disease you are given the right kind of medicine, but you do not have the belief on the medicine or on the doctor. Even if you are given the right kind of medicine by the right kind of doctor, you do not get relief out of it. This is because of your tendency to negate all kinds of such uh, exercises on yourself. Therefore, social placebo, social nocebo, the spiritual healing, all that running in our collective fervor of the society can be tested with certain contemporary utility for it. I would call them as non-traditional form of research uh, as against the conventional research that we have been doing in behavioral science. Likewise, research that raises question for other sciences through the outcome of our studies. For example, robotics. Now, human system when we are trying to develop a robotic system through the knowledge of the computational intelligence, how human system or the artificial intelligence the dynamicity of our uh, cognitive system, if we have to embed into the robotic system, how that is to be embedded can actually be done through psychological or a behavioral research for the benefit of the development of robotics or computational intelligence. All such sciences can be greatly benefited through the knowledge base of the computational science. As of now, we have been using it, but computational scientists are using more heavily our resources as compared to we are using the knowledge that is generated by the computational sciences. So, it is always important to raise more questions for other sciences through the outcome of our studies. We can raise more questions for such kind of studies done in a multidisciplinary or a interdisciplinary manner. 
Likewise, we can do research that may look into a new medium to understand old variable. For example, subconscious feeling, subconscious feeling micro momentary cues in our faces that is a new medium to understand old variable. We all know that subconscious feeling is something which is already into our system, but we never had a access to subconscious feeling. We know that there is no possibility through which we can access subconscious feeling. Can we understand the subconscious feeling in a micro momentary facial expressions? In micro momentary facial expressions, if we can capture that expressions which are instantly and involuntary expressed for a very brief period less than 100 millisecond, if we can capture that we can understand the subconscious feeling. After 200 millisecond, we develop a control on our facial expressions and all those expressions thereafter come in a socially fabricated or a socially desirable manner, which becomes purely conscious and we do not get the access to subconscious feeling, since we do not have the access to those such brief expressions in our face through the available technology. We can therefore, understand our subconscious feeling through certain newer forms of technologies, which we call as micro momentary cues in the facial expressions of emotion. So, new medium can be utilized to understand old variable, which Freud once upon a time talked about and uh, the, the objective variation for a variable for that has never been tested in experimental manner. Likewise, research that may create new environment for us, we being a behavioral scientist, a para professional group, our pro titles are not protected. When we make predictions and we if we fail, our titles are not protected as psychologists like a medical practitioner or an engineer whose titles are protected, our titles are not protected. Until and unless we create a new environment for us, it would not be possible for us to develop a complete professional uh, flavor for the discipline. Without having such kind of flavor, we would not be able to raise our level to uh, uh, the extent in which we may say that our titles are protected. In fact, in other countries in US and uh, western uh, world, the, the titles of the psychologists are protected, because they have created a new environment for themselves. So, the non-traditional ways I will give you some examples of why and how such researches can be conducted. We can use a traditional measure for a new construct, as I have said, we can use a questionnaire method to understand optimism bias. Optimism bias is a construct we have never tested and in a collective society like ours, optimism bias is rampant. How can we measure it? Can we do such kind of measure, use such kind of measure to understand optimism bias? Like we can have a conventional outcome with uh, a field validity, like uh, we, we always uh, understand cognitive, we always measure cognitive ability. We can measure cognitive ability with a statistical validation index, but how far they have got a, a predictability in real field. Now, if I, uh, if I uh, understand somebody uh, through the use of a cognitive test that the person can be a very good shooter, I can isolate him using psychological test that he is a very good shooter, but what is the field validity of it apart from the statistical index? Can I ask him to shoot 100 times and see how many times he failed? Can that be an index validating the statistical index based on which the whole study has been conducted? So, user trial concept in our psychological validation is rarely done. It is a non-traditional approach. We can make use of such kind of approach to have a practical utility of our studies. Otherwise, most of our studies will remain in stack and we would not be able to make use of it and people would not make use of it professionally until and unless they understand the utility of such test, under what condition and with how many errors such uh, test can actually predict a outcome of a behavior cannot be established until and unless we develop our capability to the level of field validity apart from statistical validity. Likewise, we can use a customary paradigm with a unique tool, that kind of research can also be conducted. A customary paradigm is a thought generation. In order to understand what regions of the brain gets activated, under what kind of thought process. Now, thought generation 
is a customary paradigm, but we have a unique tool today which is called functional magnetic resonance imaging in which we understand the activation pattern of a brain in collaboration with some kind of thought. There are thought generation capabilities uh, uh, at a design level is possible and we can test it with some form of unique tool. In order to understand for example, for a sequential processing what kind of activation take place in which part of the brain, for a parallel processing what kind of activation takes place and in which part of the brain. So, a unique tool are available today in order to test our customary paradigm, we can do some non-traditional research based on that. We have got several known variable like uh, belief, belief system is a very important system in our psychological science, but we do not know whether there is a biology behind belief or not. This is an unknown basis, almost none of us have studied whether belief has got a biological concomitant or not. We know in our behavioral science that in order to establish a construct there are five cornerstones which are required. One is a theoretical basis is required, we know there are theoretical basis behind belief system. There are biological uh, concomitants available, there are developmental concomitants available, there are cultural concomitants available and there must be statistical base behind a particular construct. So, theoretical, biological, developmental, cultural and statistical cornerstones are important in order to develop a particular construct. Belief is also a psychological construct, we have got theoretical constructs, we have got cultural constructs, we have got a statistical construct, we have got developmental construct, but we do not have a biological construct behind it. So, can we establish uh, the relationship between belief and biology with the use of a unique tool which is called functional MRI, with the, uh, with the use of certain designs which are acceptable to both behavioral science as well as neuroscience. Now, belief, I will take an example of belief in order to explain how such studies beca has become important. Belief is very important tool, because uh, it is a state in which the individual holds a pr um, premise to be true. I have a belief means, I have a belief in the God, I believe that God is really there. So, a state in which an individual holds a premise to be true. There are questions which we can test in our non-traditional research. How far faith and health are related? is there a true relationship between faith and health. Somebody who does not have faith in a certain, um, certain uh, body, whether their health gets affected or not, this is a question we have never tested. Does spirituality predict better disease control? Those who are spiritually inclined, are they less susceptible for some kind of disease? It is not been tested. So, we can also understand whether spirituality predict better disease control or not. Is there a biological mechanism that regulate belief that whether there are specific brain regions that get activated during prayer or meditation. Now, meditation uh, we have found that those who have been doing meditation for long their brain activation pattern is different. Those who are not doing their brain activation for long uh, meditation for long their brain activation are different. So, meditated state has got a different activation pattern. Do we study? the belief system which are uh, which are corroborated with some kind of activation in the brain region. Do we have a specific brain region that gets activated during prayer or meditation has not been tested very widely. Prayer meditation all, all our concepts which are traditionally embedded into our system. Likewise, is it possible to bring permanent change in the brain through meditation? Since we know that with prayer and meditation our brain undergoes some kind of change temporarily, but with continuous prayer or meditation is it so that the brain gets uh, some kind of permanent change in the um, activation pattern or not. For example, in a recent study published in new scientist, we have found um, this study has been done by Harris in 2009 that there are greater signal for belief compared to disbelief appeared in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, lateral occipital cortex and superior frontal gyrus. So, belief is now today and known to have a, a clear relationship with the brain activation pattern. Therefore, we can tell that belief has got uh, some kind of biological uh, concomitant, but what kind of belief system, what about our traditional belief system, do we get such kind of activation with our traditional and non-traditional belief system or not. 
these are certain questions we need to answer. So, the question that I would like to put forward here that with, with certain behavioral dimensions or domains which have never tested either biologically, culturally, statistically, developmentally, theoretically, can we test them through a multidisciplinary perspective using a non-traditional paradigm. There are uh, questions also in the psychological assessment as well. We have been using all kinds of psychological test for the usage of for the understanding of human behavior, but do we use encrypted do we have an access knowledge to encrypted test development or customized step development. We have translated different uh, western tests, we have uh, adapted uh, several tests which are developed outside the domain of our country. We have standardized certain tests uh, within our own setup, but do we also customize tests to the requirement of our own population which is representative to our own population. Can we develop an encrypted test the result of which will never not be known otherwise by anybody. Can we develop a test which uh, is based on a non-traditional construct for example, social nocebo I have just talked about. Can we develop a non-traditional uh, a, a test uh, based on non-traditional construct. Can we validate a test result in simulated condition which is called virtual reality. Now, in simulated condition if the test result can be predicted the statistical indices are important for theoretical purposes for test result communication purposes. But in order to see the applicability and implementability of the test results it is important that we test them under certain simulated conditions. Is it possible to develop uh, uh, a test or a system uh, of tests or a battery of tests in order to understand the complete profile of a human being. So, these, these are certain non-traditional ways of developing uh, an assessment mechanism. Can we develop a single use non-standardized test? Now, the test if it is can be used for a single use purposes and for non with a non-standardized paradigm is it possible or is it acceptable? These are non-traditional ways of test development. Likewise, can we develop a test where scoring is done based on certain non-specific rules? I am sure such kind of tests are not generally developed by, by us because we want to go by some kind of conventional procedures. Likewise, can we develop a test which are platform invariant for administration that is the test can be administered uh, manually through a computerized system and uh, through a system uh, which is simulated uh, within a given environment which is, uh, which is a test development I would call them as platform invariant all kinds of psychological assessment that we try to develop we can do it in a non-traditional manner. Likewise for understanding for example, cognitive processes we can develop certain uh, experimental paradigms in a non-traditional manner to understand the threshold of mental workload. Of course, this area has been studied uh, uh, these days can we develop multi-skilling and emotional regulation together. If a person is capable of doing multi-skilling generally emotional regulation becomes poor. There is and if there are higher level of emotional regulations in such case multi scaling is not possible. Point is that the, the inverse relationship between two variables which are cognitive and affective in nature. If we can test them there are great implementability and applicability of such kind of test results. Task specific cognitive profiling is a very important area of cognitive assessment. We have been doing lot of theoretical researches in cognitive uh, area, but the deliverability of such kind of tests such kind of researches are not uh, so much because we do not do the task specific co cognitive profiling which are job analysis best. Likewise cognitive restructuring in extreme environment when we go to extreme environment our cognitive profile get develops some kind of disturbances or turbulence. How do we restructure? our cognitive system when we enter into an extreme environment it may be high altitude, it may be under the sea, it may be desert, it may be jungles, it may be top sky, sky anywhere under such extreme environment our cognitive system develops some kind of turbulence. Can how can we restructure them in the form of a preparedness module or in the form of a management module. It is absolutely important because we need proactive preparedness as well as retroactive management to restructure our cognitive system for the best of the performance under extreme conditions. 
but our researches generally are not directed towards this end. Cognitive engineering for high tech system is another issue, because most of the high tech systems are developing with the technological development, but our human skill do not develop so easily, so quickly. If we do not keep an uh, uh, keep a pace between the high tech system and human skill development, either the high tech system would get ob obsolete or we will become obsolete. So, cognitive engineering is a science based on which the high, high tech systems are developed. We can undertake many such researches where high tech systems are developed, keeping the cognitive system that we have in hand are in picture. Likewise, cognitive failure, simple cognitive failure in suboptimal conditions. Under certain extreme suboptimal conditions, we fail in very simple task, but not necessarily in a very complex task. Do we study why such simple failures take place in extreme conditions or suboptimal conditions? Now, how the energy is uh, reallocated, how the resource is distributed is not known to us. Such kind of researches definitely can be done. Like how do we process an information <coughs> which is shown to us in an indirect manner? There are uh, cognitive processes for direct understanding, for direct vision, for direct uh, listening. But if the, if the energy is put to you in an indirect manner, how our cognitive system works? Like in night vision camera, night vision goggles, we get an image in an indirect manner or in a laparoscopic operation, the surgeon gets in an indirect manner, where the particular damage is there in a system, in a body. How the surgery is done using the computer screen, which is an indirect display of the actual difficulty, which has brought a sea change in the entire surgical operations for the human system. So, the cognitive processing of indirect display is very re, uh, rarely known. We the behavioral scientist actually can take up many such researches in order to understand how such cognitive processes take place. We can also work for some kind of social developmental studies, <coughs> which are not conventionally done. That how the social engineering takes place in the attitude change, how can I change the mind of a person, how can I change the mind of a group of people through the use of social engineering. How can we uh, negotiate um, a, a crisis, for example, a hostage negotiation, such studies are absolutely important, how such uh, negotiation can be done. What is called non-conventional leadership, where the leader is never exposed to a condition or never uh, known to anybody. The leader has to hibernate all the time, it is called non-conventional leadership. In a social developmental process, how we can build leaders, who are coming up with such kind of qualities, how can you identify them. Terrorism and mass stress, mass panic has become an issue following terrorism. How can we insulate the public mind through some form of psychological mechanism to get rid of the mass stress that our people are experiencing over a period of time. Rumor formation and mob hysteria, how it can be controlled, how rumor can be checked, how propaganda can be countered are certain areas which are uh, areas very rarely studied by us. What are the social triggers for fratricide and siblicide, which often takes place under some certain context or conditions? What are the social triggers? Can we identify them? Because if the triggers are controlled, definitely such occurrences can be controlled in a big way. Likewise, how can we profile a person from some form of secondary data? All are important areas of research which we can actually conduct in a non-conventional manner. I will give some future uh, researches program for enhancing human cognition. For example, can we study the cognitive processing capability? What kind of drugs actually enhance our cognitive capability? Are certain areas which are not uh, known to us and at least the pharmacological science, behavioral science, they can come together, how memory can for example, there are a lot of attempts to understand whether memory can be improved or not, whether cognitive processing capability can be improved or not. The behavioral sciences paradigm are not properly designed in order to understand whether such things can be done or not. For example, can we enhance our capability? Can we have 360 degree vision by having uh, something at the back of our head? Can we see through with certain technology? Can we have a indirect vision analyzer? 
the use of technologies and enhancing our sensory abilities is something which is part of the human capability. Can we join hand with technology or engineering sciences along with the behavioral sciences to understand human capability in a slightly better manner. Can we uh, arouse our optimal uh, affective level by through some kind of magnetic brain stimulation. There are hundreds of people suffering and depression. There are a lot of studies these days going on understanding uh, whether certain activation in the brain areas in a certain localized areas whether they improve upon our affective arousal or not. These researches are now being coming up with medical sciences we can join hand to understand the, uh, the, the capability of human cognition for a better future tomorrow. Like can we enhance our skill variety in a virtual reality conditions. These are certain areas which where future researches can done uh, can be done to enhance our human cognition. We can also do certain research throughout the engineering sciences through decision making tools. For example, can we simulate a teamwork through collaborating agents of the computer? Is it possible to do something inductively with the use of computers which will actually carry out certain cognitive understanding at a different level and finally, the parallel processing through a network can a decision making uh, be done under such conditions. The tools can be mind defined in that way. It is also possible that uh, EEG sensors are coming up where uh, we can actually do the thought controlled computing. How the thoughts are being uh, controlled, how the EEG sensors can read our thought process. New scientists these days have come up with some such articles. We can also engage our knowledge in behavioral science, join hand with the engineering science to understand our uh, mind in a somewhat bit different way. Like thought insertion technology through microwave auditory effect for giving psychological directions for mental patients. It is absolutely possible that some kind of thought insertion te technologies can, can be utilized for obsessive compulsive patients, which are generally uh, thoughts generated whether we can use such kind of technologies to alleviate the disorders in the mental patients or not. Likewise, can we also develop some kind of mind reader with the help of the engineers like X-ray specs are being developed, EEG translators are now coming up, subvocal speech amplifiers are possible. To speak in, uh, in, in nutshell that there are engineering sciences, neurosciences, computational sciences, behavioral sciences, there are ample opportunities to come up in a multidisciplinary way to enrich the science of behavioral sciences. Because in order to do non-traditional research, we need to understand that there should be a thought clarity that what is that the mind we are trying to understand, what kind of mind we are interested in, what kind of understanding we should have about the mind. And in order to understand the mind, instead of using behavioral science only as a tool, we can derive tool from engineering sciences, neurosciences, computational sciences and then fortify our science. After we develop the thought clarity, we need to understand that how multidisciplinarity can actually be uh, developed. This multidisciplinarity should come by using different methodologies from different sciences, then enriching the sciences of behavior, the behavioral sciences through the understanding of cause effect relationship. After we do the inter the multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity, we can think of having some kind of deliverability in our uh, behavioral science, because without having deliverability, behavioral science will ultimately not fortify. So, with the deliverability, we can understand that the seamless continuity in our science with other forms of science will develop and in that process, we should be able to come up with some kind of results. And these results are possible not only through conventional and traditional method, this is also possible through the non-traditional methodologies. Thank you. Thank you.